Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, Manjaro 2004, codenamed Lysa, has come out, and I want to have a brief look at it. There is some fascinating stuff in here. Uh, mostly, they seemed to pull off exactly what I think Ubuntu is trying to pull off and has so far not yet been able to correctly do. Again, I'm not hating on Ubuntu. What I'm saying is we need to have a model where we're relying on the curated repositories and then your extra repositories. Again, it took a long time, but we finally got that bug report from Ubuntu out. Now that we see it's a bug report, they're working on it. They do have some of that resolved as of the last time I looked at Ubuntu, which was a few days ago. Some of the apt, in fact, possibly most of the apt packages are now available, although they're still working on the icons. If you can still dig in, and if you know what you're looking for, you can install the software that you want. It still tends to want to default to the snap, and that is what my ultimate issue is for reasons I have mentioned. Well, it turns out that Manjaro uh, has figured out how to do exactly all this and probably do it better than uh, most other distros could dream, including my beloved Linux Mint. You guys need to take a, uh, a tip for Manjaro as well. Now, am I going to switch everything to Manjaro over this? No. The reason is Arch uh, Manjaro, which is based on Arch, always has the latest versions of all of the latest packages, and I explicitly do not run my system on the latest of everything. I want Linux Mint because it's not going to force me into new versions. I don't want snaps or flat packs because those are going to force me onto newer versions. I want my system to maintain its security without changing the UI or the package versions or things like this because I use my system not for tinkering and seeing what I can do, but for actually getting real work down, uh, real work done, and I don't have time to go back and relearn how to use the UI if the developers decided to change a package. So bringing us to Manjaro. Now they did release the, uh, the three uh, core ones, the XFCE, the KDE Plasma, and the GNOME version. And uh, what I did for this test here is I used the KDE. So we're using Plasma 518. Uh, once again, they just have this beautiful theming. Some of the Plasma specific things, they have console profiles. Uh, is it, I do not know how to pronounce that. Is it Yuaka skins? Y Yaka blah, blah, skins, whatever that happens to be. Uh, it's the drop down terminal, which is really cool. It's a drop down terminal. They have new skins for <laughs> <laughs> profiles. They did some other things. Uh, they gave a simple menu, which I'm not a big fan of, but I'll show you what simple menu looks like. And uh, those are just the basic KDE. But if you get down to the bottom, Pamuk 9.4, this is the glorious part of this Manjaro build. What they were able to actually do here is integrate Pamuk with toggle on, toggle off, snap, and flat pack support out of the box. Basically meaning, out of the box, you first boot this up, they're not enabled. But if you want to use snaps or you want to use flat packs, you can toggle that button on and then it's going to give you a list when you search for software. It shows you, is this the repository or is it a snap or is it a flat pack? So we are going to have a look at that. Also, the new uh, Manjaro Architect now supports ZFS installation. Uh, we're not looking at Architect here. Kernel 5.6 is used for this release, uh, so all of the latest drivers and etc. So let's go ahead and uh, boot this guy up and see what it happens to look like. All right, so we are landing on our startup screen here. It was completely blank on this screen. Um, that could be because we're on a virtual machine. We might have nice loading animations. This is kind of what we get and launching in full screen on the virtual box. So this has, I think, four processing cores and six gigs of RAM, I think, is what we have. Again, with Manjaro, all of the theming is just so nice. You saw a little hint of that drop-down uh, terminal there. Uh, there is a hotkey for that. I do not know off the top what that hotkey happens to be. Uh, but when we first land up, we have this box here that we can toggle off. In fact, we will toggle it off now. We have information about the product, information about how to support them, and some documentation. We also have an application screen here. This guy here is going to give you the ability to launch just kind of the, the, uh, the most used, most common applications that you might need. Looks like printing is already enabled. 
There's eBooks. We have FB Reader, Calibri. We have Office applications. On the installation, we had the choice of installing um, either um, is it SoftMaker Office uh, or LibreOffice. So I went with the LibreOffice. We have just some basic uh, packages there. Um, or is it the free office? I don't know. I forget which the other one is that they're offering us. Uh, I use LibreOffice. So we do have LibreOffice still or we have LibreOffice fresh. So the difference, of course, is still is more of like an LTS. Fresh is always going to be your rolling latest versions. And you can actually go ahead through here and look at the rest of the applications. Uh, the other thing we wanted to look at real quick is just the menuing, of course, with with the theming. The, Manjaro has some of the absolute best theming, the, one of the most polished Linux distributions as far as how everything looks right out of the box. It's going to look very good, very consistent all across the board, no matter what you're doing with it. Let's boot up Firefox there, and let's see if there's... Uh, do we have VLC installed or not? We do have VLC. Pulling up a few different applications of a few different uh, different styles. Just making sure all of our theming is consistent, and it's going to be across the board. So we have very nice theming across the board. And if you don't like this particular application menu, you can go and see the alternatives. And one of the ones that they have given us is the simple menu. Uh, as I'd said before, I'm not a huge fan of the simple menu, but for people who do like it, you can put your favorite applications over here, or you can go into your individual grouping applications. Let's just go ahead and keep it on this one for the duration of the of the video here. But uh, for here's your education. We have Libre Math. We have Steam installed, uh, basic graphics. There's really not a lot of software installed. Uh, we have Thunderbird, Firefox, uh, Qubit, Torrent, Conversation, just a variety of KDE applications, LibreOffice, we have VLC. So here's App Image Launcher. I believe this will give us the ability to uh, create an app image. Um, there, launch one out. Not actually used that before, so i got to use some of these applications sometimes, see how they work. <laughs> All right. Software updater. We have add remove software, which is our PAMUC. We have our system settings. We do have a few extra themes built into here. Let's just go ahead and have a look at what we have. So here's basic hardware configurations. So we can uh, turn on, turn off various components of the hardware up there. There's kernel adjustments. Here's uh, Breathe 2 is our current theme. We have a variety of different themes in there as well. Plasma Styles, again, Breathe 2 Dark. We also have a Breathe 2 Light. If you are looking for more of a light theme, you have that as an option there as well. I definitely like the uh, Breathe 2 Dark a little bit better in this, this particular build here. All right, Application Styles. Things are going to look like Window Decorations. So nothing out of the ordinary for Plasma in here. The one part that I really want to indicate, uh, if you're new to uh, Manjaro, a couple things to look at. Inside of our, uh, I'll call it the task manager, it's kind of what it's called in Windows there. We do have a package manager, and uh, our package manager here will load up Pamuk. We're going to revisit that in a moment. We also have on the Manjaro uh, logo here is Manjaro settings. Let's go ahead and open this up. We can do our kernels. We have language packs and other options as well. So if you do need to adjust your, your kernel, you can come over here. So you can see we're running 5.6. 7-1 is running and installed. We do have some the 5.7 release candidate if you want to get adventurous and do some, some experimental. And we have the 5.6.4. So if you want to run with any of those. So you can go back to previous versions if you need. They have just the LTS kernels launched here. So you can use anything that you happen to want to use. All right, let's go back and revisit Pamuk for a second. Because I think that this is one of the greatest features and where uh, many Linux distributions are trying to go with. We want to have the ability to do snaps or app images, um, flat packs. Of course, there's no app image store in here. Just still downloading those wherever you can find them. Uh, but for snaps and flat packs, 
different people have different opinions. And of course I have my views and opinions. I don't out, I'm not 100% against them. I'm just question at times pushing those above other software for, as I said, reasons I've mentioned in previous videos. But what I really like about this is the ability to toggle on, toggle off and enable those. So let's just look, for example, at, um, let's do GIMP actually. I did check Caden live. So here's GIMP. You can see if we um, click through on this guy here, it's we'll get the information about it. So you can see the basic information. Now it's not quite as clear what repository other than it just says extra. Um, let's do the same for like Caden Live. So here's the same. Another one that uh, I've been looking at on Ubuntu is Simple Screen Recorder. So here's simple screen recorder and from the community repositories. All right, but if we come down here and click in on our dots and go down to our preferences, enter your super secret password, that's definitely not one, two, three. And you can come in here and you can uh, toggle on your various settings but you can see here we have the Arch user repository as usual. We also have the ability to enable snap support and we have the ability to enable Flatpak support. Flatpak support, we can check for updates. Snap, we do not have that option. So we'll go ahead and close that guy up. Give it a second. And now you see we have simple screen recorder from the Snap store. We have one from the community. You can see this is the unofficial. Now these are the two unofficial ones that keep on showing up inside of Ubuntu. Neither one of them is an official one. If you actually look at it, you can see the developers are clearly not uh, the gentleman who created this excellent application. Uh, neither of them are. So you can see that those are the two. And then of course here is from the community repository. So it will clearly tell you that that is a snap. So let's look at Caden Live. So from Caden Live, here we have the Flat Hub. So this is the Flatpak version. This is the Snap version. And this is the repository version. So you can very clearly see which ones we are looking at. Let's have a look at GIMP. So we have a Snap from GIMP. We have the Extra from GIMP. And let's see if we have a Flatpak from GIMP. There is GIMP from the Flatpak. So it looks like Manjaro has accomplished what several other distros are trying to do. In fact, they've even done this better than my favorite Linux Mint. Because if I don't want Flatpak, which generally I don't, I can just go in here and just toggle it off. No, no snap pack for you. <laughs> no snap pack, <laughs> whatever. No flat pack or snap for you. Uh, or you can turn them on if you need to turn them on. So this one here is what all the buzz has been about. Here's the flat pack version of Cody. Here is the uh, repository version of Cody. And let's see if we have just a snap version somewhere. There is a snap version of Kodi as well, although I think it's actually uses a slightly different name. I uh, can't seem to find it. VLC. Now, oftentimes you're kind of seeing that the VLCs are even more up to date in the repository than they are in the flat packs or in the snaps because, hey, welcome to Arch. Uh, so that's the type of stuff that we see. But what's uh, so much has gone into this in that we can toggle those on or toggle those off independently at will. And that in and of itself is what makes this such a good system out of the box. So that is, um, that's basically the list of the changes. Um, in brief summary, again, we have the theming is new in Plasma. Obviously, the latest versions, um, there's, uh, there's new skins, and I didn't mention this, but there's also new profiles, so you can do change profiles and things inside of console, and the ability to add and remove and control snap pack and uh, snap and flat pack repositories, I'm going to keep doing that, is absolutely a win. So, hands down, Manjaro just keeps getting better and better. And for this reason, this is one of the reasons why I do recommend it, particularly if you need an Arch type system. Definitely looking at Manjaro is 
one of the best ways to get an arc system if you do not have the time to or or if you're scared of the command line whatever else if you don't have time to read the documentation or follow through the the documentation to install arch manually of course there's other things like arco linux and arch labs and and things like that which will as well help you get an, an arch up and running as well but even on those you do not get something nearly as beautiful and as polished as you get with running manjaro so manjaro 2004 lisa i give it absolutely two thumbs up Excellent job of integrating snaps and flat packs the way that they should be done. Excellent way of getting all the theming done. It's just overall a, a wonderful looking system. So uh, there's my thoughts on the new Manjaro build. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.